Welcome to my talk, Iterative Threat Modeling, Enhancing Security in Agile Development. Little introduction about me. My name is Jagdish Chand, also known as Jax. I'm a full stack developer who plays DevSecOps role in Dev ThoughtWorks. The pain trip model shows the skill sets I have and the deep knowledge respectively. I always find ways to implement shift security left approach and encourage teams to follow security development. I'm also an OSWE batch holder from Offensive Sick, along with an AWS security specialist batch. You can follow me in LinkedIn for any security related news and articles. This is the outline of the talk. First, we are going to see what is threat modeling, followed by agile threat modeling, explained with a simulation of how to run the exercise, and finally, how to incorporate the same into our agile rituals to achieve iterative threat modeling. Before finishing, we will take a step back and see how to run the threat modeling in different parts of the ongoing project. So first, what is a threat modeling? It's an exercise used to identify threats or different ways to attack a system and model it properly so that the development and operations team can come up with ideas to mitigate it. By doing this proactively, we can prevent the software that we have developed from being compromised by the attackers before it is too late. The traditional threat modeling exercise involves mainly security specialists with very few stakeholders from tech teams, development teams. They collaborate, discuss, identify threats, and propose a mitigation response plan for it without the development teams much involved. The problem with the traditional threat modeling is that it does not involve development teams and it creates, this creates a lot of misconceptions around it. The main misconception is that the penetration testing and the code reviews can compensate for threat modeling. These two activities are very effective in finding bugs and making sure the high quality of the software, not for security assessment. Threat modeling will uncover design flaws which cannot be identified by these techniques. Without understanding the potential threats an application faces, we cannot ensure in addressing all the risk. And the second misconception is a lot of people think that threat modeling can be done after the delivery the software, which is very big red flag. This puts the development life cycle in a brittle situation where the threat modeling discovers a foundational security threat, which requires a rewrite of the entire architecture of the system. And last misconception is that it is too much of time consuming and it is complex. Yes, it is. If you only at a first glance, but if you follow a simple steps, we can achieve threat modeling in a, in a limited time period. These misconceptions created the dawn of agile threat modeling. In order to run a threat modeling in an agile software development, we are in need of certain requirements, like we need to bring a defensive mindset into the development team so that the development team have the knowledge on security implications. Second, we need to create a collaborative tailored approach with the development team for capturing threats proactively. A collaborative approach with the business teams so that they, uh, they can together bring up threats together and leave some space to individual agile teams to tailor the need based upon their working situation. So there should be a space of each agile teams working in an organization to tailor the tune, the threat modeling to their needs. And third one is unawareness. Uh, they need to overcome the human errors because of unawareness. This development team should be conscious of the security impacts of the threats. 
how it is going to affect the business how is going to affect a different department from their own box a small bubble they have to think more than their agile teams the impact is not only to the development but also to the business and the fourth a simple exercise which should be introduced at any time of the project and can be repeated iteratively so keeping the requirements in mind and running trial and errors on various agile teams in across thoughtworks we came up with these five steps of agile threat modeling it is influenced by the threat modeling framework but we kept it very simple to run it in any agile environment the first step is to identify what we want to accomplish in the scope of the exercise followed by the representation of the scope then we brainstorm on the ways that can go wrong once we identify what can go wrong we discuss about the mitigation values and finally we reflect our outcomes of the exercise so that we can do it better next time we will go through each of these steps in detail in upcoming slides to understand the implementation of the exercise in the real world scenario we are going to use the open source juice shop as our guinea pig to simulate the agile threat modeling steps little intro about the application the juice shop is an online website which takes in orders of fresh juice and delivers into your home with a beautiful packaging juice shop is the most vulnerable insecure application available in the internet so that people who want to practice security mitigation or security practices they can use this application as a guinea pig and this is a high level architectural diagram of the juice shop we have a front end app we have a uh, back end juice shop server which runs in a node js and we also have a payment service node js running in the back end with a postgres database so few uh, high level legend user uh, data flow is represented in an vector vector arrow and authorization boundaries also represented here so before we get started on our agile threat modeling exercise we should have a security objective to which everyone should adhere to security objective defines the organizational goal towards security which includes protecting the main assets of the organization like customer data etc if there is an organization security objective organizational security objective we inherit it else we create a security objective for our scope it is always better to create a security objective for the organization but it's not a blocker for our exercise security objective should revolve around the principle of cia triad cia stands for c for confidentiality assets which are confidential information should never be compromised i for integrity of the data should be protected at all costs from tampering a for availability the service availability should not be interrupted for regular uses because of a security threat <coughs> and it should also answer the following questions what kind of losses puts the organization objective in jeopardy is it having the customer database stolen or a payments are we worried about a fraud is it malicious insiders or particularly capable hackers we will try to implement the security objective for our juice shop application as the juice shop is an online revenue generating platform the impact to negative negatively will affect the sales of the shop we should take care so that the sales of the juice shop is not impacted because of the negative reputation secondly we should reduce the breach 
or personally identifiable information of the customer, which in turn affects the sales of this juice shop. Third, we should reduce the risk of malicious alteration leading to a financial loss. And finally, the chance of malicious denial of availability of the shop to customer should be reduced. So these are our four security objectives for the juice shop application. So let's start with our first step. What do we want to accomplish? Scoping. This is an important step of threat modeling. We should be very conscious in including the right scoping of the exercise. Always focus on few chunks before performing the activity. Few best practices in creating the scope is whenever a new or upcoming security sensitive feature such as login and checkout flow is coming up, a particular microservice and its collaborating services integrating towards it, and high level overview of a system to identify security tech depth. Stop at the uh, integration level, do not go at the details. So reducing the scope, keeping the scope as simple as possible. And finally, the continuous delivery pipeline and delivery infrastructure. For our simulation, we will scope the customer login flow as our uh, feature to run our exercises. So we have a customer login, Epic, and the acceptance criteria goes like, as a customer, I need a page where I can enter login credentials so that I can access the application as a logged in user. We also have a dev story card for it. Those, so this is an new feature that is getting implemented in a beautiful e-commerce juice shop application. So with this, we'll go to the second, a quick representation of the scope. We are going to follow a software centric approach here. In a software centric model, we represent our systems in a holistic view with the software layers, highlighting how data flows from one system to another system using an vector the arrows and which is a short form of data flow diagram. The key principle here is to identify the entry points, assets and trust levels that represent the access rights. You should capture the end to end flow, including the external entity where the data flows from for every use case with the system interactions, of course. The key stakeholders during this exercise is engineers, which compose of DevOps and as well as the development teams. This is an example of the data flow diagram of the login flow that we are going to create for the juice shop. So here we have three uh, systems involved, juice, the front end app, the back end juice shop server, which runs in the Node.js and the external identity provider here. The user when reaches the front end app is redirected to the identity provider after authentication. It provides an authentic code auth code, which is sent to juice, uh, juice shop server backend server. Backend server validates the auth code. If the auth validation is success, then redirects the customer to the home page with the saved token in the session. So this is an overview of the data flow diagram that we have created for the juice shop login flow. So moving on with this to the third step, what can go wrong here? We are going to evil brainstorm about how we, how the application can produce threats. This is where we, we were attackers had in coming up with ways to attack, break or frustrate a particular bit of software from attackers mindset. The key principle is to be aware of the time and never go into rabbit hole discussion and focus on uh, quantity over quality. Create as many as threats possible without stopping to analyze is it really worth or not. And there is a secu uh, stakeholders involved in this exercise in a security team 
product owners from the business and engineers. Now, oh, there are multiple ways or methodologies to implement the evil brainstorming, starting from pasta, attack trees, and vast. Each has their own pros and cons. Few, uh, pasta is a very good attacker focused, but it has a very comprehensive assurance exercise. It is a very long running exercise. And we also have a time box just right, which is very applicable for agile teams, which we are gonna be concentrating in this exercise or in this talk specifically. This time box stride is very developer focused. What is a stride? It's a methodology to wear attackers hat in different scenarios, different possible scenarios, walking through and identifying, walking through multiple threats, walking to the different uh, hats of the attacker, like spoofed identity, and identifying if there is a threat or not, uh, and capturing it in our whiteboard or in our beautiful uh, uh, data flow diagram. So let's understand the stride a little bit, what it is and the different hats of the stride, and then try to capture the information. S in the stride stands for spoofed identity. It makes us think if an attacker can impersonate someone as using a stolen token, stolen token, or a cookies, or just brute forcing it. The key concepts is identity and authentication. And stakeholders here uh, think through how an application can fail when there is lack of authentication, any form of authentication, tokens or uh, JWT tokens or identifying your, if you are the real user to do it. Is there a lack of authentication inside the system? And we should also go think through if there is a weakness in the process, in the resetting credentials. Our authentication mechanism should subject to brute force attack. Are there any ways attacker can run a brute force attack on login pages? Can an attacker allow you uh, use a very weak password to get into a system or an uh, already compromised password to get into a system so is there any other way a attacker can spoof themselves as a customer a legitimate customer and get into the system so diff identifying different ways or uh, scenarios qualifies as a threat. So once you identify a threat, capture it in our data flow diagram. How do we capture it? We will look into the latest slides. And moving on in our stride hacks, T in our stride stands for tampering with input. Here the attacker can go beyond the expected input like hexa giving a hexadecimal URL encoded values, special characters in login credentials, etc. The key concept is validation. Are we doing validation on that unexpected values the attacker is trying to use? Uh, what is the integrity of the system? What is the injection? Can the attacker do an cross-site scripting, inject a malicious script inside the client side and run it? Uh, does the validation happens in the front end as well as the back end? These are all the few scenarios and concepts that the stakeholder has to go through before coming up a possible threats inside the system. R in the stride stands for repetition of action. It makes us think if any attacker can do malicious activity and get away without getting the proof of the activity. Key concepts is logging and audit. Is the logs centralized is one of the scenarios that we can think through. If the logs are centralized, can the malicious uh, user delete the logs by impersonating other self or escalating using a different credentials. So these are the scenarios that we have to look through or identify in the process of the exercise or give a chance for the stakeholders to come up with the threats. So information disclosure, which, which is the eye of the stride. 
it lets us think if the system can give more information what it is supposed to be like server versions in the requested headers response headers the key concepts is the confidentiality encryption and leakage we should not provide an unwanted information when it is not required like are we handling the unexpected expression gracefully before sending it to the customer what what's the implications why what happens if we send an unexpected expression exception back to the user we disclose if you are using a no sql database or sql database are we what is the version of the server that we are sql database we are using in or what is the type of server we are running with the tech stack and un this are information which are unwanted to the user so we should able to uh, abstract that information and send it out so any information which is not necessary to the user should never be given to the user d in stride stands for denial of service can an attacker bring using bots can run and distribute a denial of service so that the legitimate users cannot access the application then if they can run it then it's a threat the key concepts is availability whatever threats that compromises the availability application are categorized under denial of service finally e in the stride stands for elevation of privilege it makes us think if the attacker can access of files or systems which they should not be this is also applicable to internal employees sensitive files should only be accessed on demand basis key concept is authorization isolation remote code execution few examples that we can think through is like all the employees including non technical stakeholders have protection edit access does all the system have authorization implemented to check the right access of the user before giving back to the user so we had understood what is the stride model till now and discussed about it. we are going to apply the stride model on our guinea pig juice shop after applying we come up with lot of threats uh, which is reputation uh, jeopardizing the reputation of action like there is no logs for how many unauthorized entries comes in there can be a brute force attack there can be a deed uh, distributed denial of service and tampering with the input there is no strong password configuration in, in our services and also there is a missing configuration related to elevation of privilege so these are all the threats that we have identified after applying the stride model so with this lot of threats in our hand we move on to the fourth step what are we going to do about it we are going to prioritize this is where the pe people the stakeholders vote the riskiest threats keeping our security objective in mind the principle is to use a threat model and the security objective that we have defined in the first step using these two techniques we prioritize the most riskiest threat that we have to concentrate on what does the dread stands for the d stands for damage how bad the damage of the threat is is it business as well as the technical how big is the damage how reproducible is the attack how how easy it is reproducible exploitable how much work has to be done to launch the attack affected users how many people are affected by the impact or impacted by this discoverable d for discoverability how easy is to discover the threat so using the threat model and security objective we prioritize the cards the stakeholders who prioritize are the security team the business stakeholders and the engineers and how do we this is an uh, example of prioritization of the juice shop uh, 
that we have uh, done before the stride model applying the stride model so here you as you can see we have two cards ddos and no strong password configuration the ddos is prioritized top because it affects the availability and damages the reputation of the application and it also reduce uh, it also increases the uh, possibility of the reputation of the juice shop because there is a direct security objective associated with it we should reduce the malicious denial of availability of the shop and the checkout services to the customers so that's why the ddos has been prioritized at the top no strong password configuration also affects the availability of the application and with a high chance of reproducibility using an uh, already compromised passwords or easily guessable passwords the uh, the tools available in the market can make sure we run a brute force attack on dictionary attack on the application and get the details out of it once the information the customer information is revealed is too much uh, if the password is too much guessable or uh, uh, compromised by the attack it breaches the personal information information uh, identifier information by the of the customers which is this our second security objective based upon this security objective and our dread model we say that this is a strong top security threat along with this we have three other no logs about how unauthorized entries apis or not all the apis are unauthenticated storing customer details in jwt as an classified or prioritized threat after identifying the threat we are going to mitigate it how we are going to mitigate capture the mitigation it can be a tech tip user story acceptance criteria or epics or even a spike to identify if it is a real threat or not by any one of these methods we capture the mitigation methods that we are going to be applied the common anti patterns is not capturing the mitigations in a project management platforms we if you are using a jira capture the mitigations in the jira not in a spreadsheets or emails which is not a project management platforms so you make sure that you capture the mitigations in the project management platforms and prioritizing the mitigations over threat just because the mitigation is a low hanging fruit that should not be done as first the threat which is more risky as has to be handled first even though the mitigation is too much complex for it and this is an example of an mitigation that we applied for a juice shop for the threats identified previously so we have created a definition of done which makes sure all our apis are authenticated before the moving the cards to a done for ddos we have created acceptance criteria where the attacker IP address has to be rejected if it is found to be malicious, and a tick tap for strong password configuration, and a epic for an logging of the unauthorized entries, and finally a spike for to see if it, we are really vulnerable by storing customer details in the JWT, and finally we go into the what did we do a good job step final fifth step what we are going to do is we are going to reflect ourselves on the outcomes of the exercise feedback and continuous improvement is a central to miss uh, managing risk without feedback we will never improvise or do a better job the key principle is analyze analyzing the scope was the scope too granular was it very big can we do anything about it or should we not do anything analyze the tools used what about the location and remote tools used analyze the outcome is a threat discovered where a rare find or just a stones should we tweak the stride model 
Should we treat the examples that is given to the stakeholders? Should we tween about it? Should we work on it or not? That's a way, uh, depending upon the outcomes of the exercise, you tween and make it, make it better. The stakeholders here is security team and the engineers. Once the reflection is over, we go through the cycle again for every agile sprints or iterations, which leads to iterative threat modeling. How effective is iterative threat modeling? The main hindering factor of running a threat modeling exercise is the alignment between stakeholders like security team, business team, and the development team. Each one has their own perspective of security in their mind. And the agile threat modeling exercise aligns them together as common security goal. This workshop or this exercise should not run more than 60 minutes. In this exercise, we align on the factor what is the final destination that we are going to reach? Uh, what, uh, reach or what, what we want to deliver. We align together on the goal threats, prioritization and the mitigation actions. Once everyone is aligned, it is very easy to repeat and inject into our every iteration. One of the agile rituals is a backlog refining where we refine the stories that are going to be delivered or picked up in the next iteration. We can run the exercise in the same session, which should not take more than 15 minutes. By running this, using the simple steps in the backlog refining for every iteration, we bring in the security mindset to the development teams and make sure we deliver secure products. Depending upon your team position, you can run this exercise the way you want. If, the, if your team sits next to you in a same physical environment, you can run it face to face. The steps is print the cue cards from this presentation, gather everyone against the whiteboard and draw a high level uh, data flow diagram on the board, use stickies or sharpies to capture the threats and mitigation. Save the artifacts digitally, not physically. If the team is hybrid and remote, take an inspiration from the PDF attached and use any whiteboard presentation in your organization to create. Capture the data flow diagram, architecture diagram in this template, use stickies and capture the threats mitigation. One important point to running the workshop is be time conscious because you can easily get into a rabbit hole. And if you want to learn more about threat modeling, there are various ways. One is an uh, OASP Slack where there are more than 500 threat modelers actively discussing about threat modeling and its future. And there is a community in Reddit you can follow for public talks or examples or tools or techniques. In ThoughtWorks, there is a separate blog for security which exclusively talks about threat modeling and the DevSecOps information. And finally, there is a Martin Follower blog, which talks about threat modeling for developers. And the links are in the respective uh, blocks. Now that we have gone through the iterative threat modeling for development, let's take a step back and understand how threat modeling is applicable in different stage of projects. When a new project starts, we start with planning stage. We run a business level threat modeling at the requirement gathering stage, followed by a high level threat modeling at architectural design stage. Once the planning requirement design happens, we go into a build deploy testing code phase before the deploy and release happens. Build deploy testing. In the build deploy testing code, we introduce the Agile Iterative Threat Modeling Exercise. So, threat modeling at different stages has different ways or different uh, outcomes. Business level is different from the application threat modeling and delivery team or design level is from different from 
iterative or agile threat modeling here. So there are a lot of mnemonics in this talk. You might be a little bit confused about what all things. Let's take a quick recap. You don't need to be a security engineer or an expert to run a threat model. Threat modeling will identify threats that you will never find in automation. Threat modeling at any point can be introduced in the software development lifecycle. Exist, extend your existing ways of working and ask what can go wrong. Apply the stride model. That is the most quick and flexible way. And use the dread and security uh, objectives to prioritize the cards and always create stories, task acceptance criteria or spike. Never go outside the project development management tools. And don't worry, there is a lot of people out there in the community to help you support. Hope you enjoyed my talk. Feel free to reach to me for any questions related in my link using my LinkedIn profile. Thank you for joining my talk.